Hello guys, welcome to a new video and this is the episode where we are finally going to start building the engine. I basically have everything ready. So um, what we need to do is assemble pistons and rods, measure the piston ring gaps, uh, clean all the threads on the block and the block itself, uh, install the bearings, install the crank, measure the bearings or the bearing clearance, install the oil nozzles um, and that's most of the starting part i think um, i'll assemble the oil pump but that's more later stuff so what i'm gonna start with is the pistons um, we're gonna assemble the pistons and the rods and then we are gonna move on to probably uh, making sure all the hardware is good and ready to go and start cleaning all the threads again i already did it once but we're gonna do it again so uh, yeah let's get the pistons together so to get things started I got the direction of the connecting rod, I think I searched it up in a book, so there's an arrow on the piston that needs to face the front, uh, so the timing area, the timing chain of the uh, engine, and then here you have the connecting rod and the, the cap, and there's a number on it, for example this is 2, so that number needs to face the exhaust side, so like this, yeah, so the exhaust side, so that way you can know what how the piston and the rod needs to go. One tip I got as well is to measure the pistons that hold the connecting rod and the piston in together. Uh, weigh them, weigh all the pistons and then match them so the heaviest pin goes in the lightest piston for a better balance. So that's what we are going to do now. I got my uh, notebook and then we're going to write it down. So they are all weight and as you can see pin 1 is the lightest and the rest is the same and then um, piston 3 is the heaviest and 6 and 4 are the lightest so we need to match the heaviest piston 3 to pin 1 and for the rest it doesn't really matter so uh, that's what we're gonna do. All the rods and pistons are connected um, so that's one job out of the way I think the next job we are gonna do is measure the piston rings so I'm gonna clean the cylinder walls we'll get the piston rings in one by one measure them and then label them to according to each cylinder number so I'm gonna get the piston rings and then uh, clean up the table we'll get that going so here we have the piston rings so what I'm gonna do is just write the numbers down, put the piston rings um, on top of each other and then we'll uh, keep them apart. So C is the top ring, B is the middle ring, A is the bottom ring. So I'm probably gonna go say B, C, B, A and then um, do them one by one. So cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six, all uh, ring C, then ring B and that's probably gonna be the order we're gonna do it in. So I'm just gonna take all the C's and we should be good. So this is one. So one very important fact with the uh, ring is the end gaps. So I have this three series manual here and then we go to piston rings, end gaps, six cylinder, funnels, then you can see what gaps the end gaps of what size end gaps should be so the top ring second ring oil control ring we'll keep that in mind and start with the C which is the top one so top compression ring which is 0 0.2 until 0 0.4 so uh, yeah first I'm doing this so 
I'm gonna clean the cylinder walls, make them dry because they're oily now. Then we can measure. Now that we got the first piston ring in place, I pushed it in with the piston, so I'm sure it's all right and uh, so it's all straight. And then I pushed it a little further down, so not on the top because the cylinders can, I don't know. I, this is all the first for me, so I don't know all the information, but I was told this is the right way to do it. So we're going to do it this way. So now we're going to grab the feeler gauge and see what the actual cap is. If we're talking about the ring end gap, it's that's the gap we're gonna measure. So we got the filler gauge here. So now we're just gonna look for 0 0.5, 0 0.1, so it's too small. So 0 0.20. Yeah, I can see it. And then we're just gonna. Yeah, so 0 0.25 fits or 0 0.2 doesn't really make a difference so we're just gonna try to five to five fits as well 0 30 it's 40 30 30. Yeah, so 0 0.3 just barely fits. So we're just going to try 0 0.35 just to make sure. But I'm pretty sure it's 0 0.3, which is within spec. So where's 3.5? 35, 35, 35, 35, 0 0.35 doesn't fit, so it's 0 0.3, so cylinder 1, uh, ring C, so the top ring is 0 0.3. So I have the notepad here, so I wrote down all the cylinders, the rings, so where's the pen, here it is, so ring C, the top ring on cylinder 1 is 0 0.30 which is within spec so i'm gonna do all the c rings and then we'll move on to the b rings and then to the a rings so yeah a lot of work but has to be done are in and measured so I got the measurements here I wrote it on the back and on the note as well so it's usually 130 135 um, this one was a bit tight no not this one sorry still on the 5 was a bit tight on the 130 but I did fit through it and the 25 felt a bit loose so I think it's 130 it's close to 130 then uh, of close to 0 030 then 0 025 so I wrote it as 0 30, but this is the tightest 0 30 from all the list and the rest is 0 35 and 0 30. So I wrote it on the bags as well, just so we know. Um, I think this measurement is done. Um, so what's next is the B rings. So let's take those rings out, put them back in the bag, in the box, and then move on to the next ring. So all the B rings are laid down here. So basically we're doing the exact same as we did uh, for the first ring. Um, so we're gonna one by one start with one, measure it, write it down again and again and again, put it in the box and do the C ring. So let's put these in, uh, I'll just measure it and then we can move on.
So we're onto the bottom ring, um, which in the manual says the oil control ring. So it's a ring with a spring inside, so you can take the spring out to measure it. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. Pretty funny. So what we're going to do is take the spring out and then we can measure the gap. I measured the first one at 0.35 as well, which is within spec. Five more to go. And then we are done with measuring the rings. We can move on to probably bearing clearance measuring. So as you can see, all the piston rings, are, or the third rings, are all in. Um, here are all the springs. And then the measurements, they are all 0 0.35. So exactly within spec. Here you can see my exact spec list. So for example, for the B ring, uh, the spec was 0 0.2 points until 0 0.4. But 1, 2, 3 of them, this one as well, are 0 0.45. Um, can't hurt to have a little more gap on a track car I think better than a too small of a gap so I'll take it for granted nothing I can do about it I mean I can't magically uh, make the piston rings small of uh, make the piston rings bigger so the gap is smaller so we'll take it for granted we'll pack up the rings back in the box and then we're probably gonna look at measuring the baron bearings so we'll have to Get the crank in and start measuring that so that's the next exciting part so i'm gonna have to end the video here um there is a lot of things that need to happen to the engine so i'm just gonna split it up in more parts so it's not one big video but just more parts here you can have a little sneak peek there are still some small issues with the block and head that needs to get fixed so there is a possibility that engine needs to go in two pieces but it is what it is um thank you guys for watching this video um next week we're gonna move on to the uh, more exciting stuff with the engine so the crank and uh, the oil pump and stuff like that so next week you're gonna see that uh or either sleeping at this so um thank you guys for watching the video i hope you guys liked it Please like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.